So for reference, it's just after 10 o'clock in the morning on Sunday. Those people at the door were religious door knockers. If I'm not mistaken, they're supposed to be at church right now. I ask you, where is the common decency? So, apart from interrupting me, they did actually give me a nice point to break the video, so this will probably be the beginning of a new one. And last time, we had some rebel trouble, so let's clear those up. Poland no longer considers Gotland a rival. Well, Poland considers me a rival. That is interesting. I guess that makes sense. We have a long border. They want some of the land I have. Who are they allied with? Denmark and Grodno. That's not really that big of a deal, all things considered. I'm also thinking that it might be a good idea to declare Gotland a rival. Because we need three, and we can send a fleet up there to privateer. We actually already have one, I do believe, being constructed. Or I was going to do that. I think I was going to do that, and I hadn't done it yet. I do want to construct a new pro privateer flotilla, so let's build one here. And I think we will declare Gotland a rival when it's finished, because then we can get a ton of uh, force projection points for sailing around in the Baltic Sea and annoying them. Sending privateers against people is a great way to get your uh, your power projection up, and if you get to 25, you get an extra leader without upkeep. And you, if you have 50, I'm not sure how you'd get 50. I guess if you were rivaling a massive, massive superpower, you might be able to, because you'd be able to go to so many sea zones. So before we continue on with time, I want to move these armies back into spots where they won't suffer humongous attrition. You are all artillery, if I remember right. I do. You I'll send one of you there. Scipio can stay in Adana or Antioch? Adana. It's got a higher force limit. You two should be able to take care of this Mongol patriot problem. Bloody Mongols. In my Roman Empire? Yeah, how do you like them apples? Get the fuck off my lawn. Um, somebody said, I believe in one of the uh, one of the videos that I should be building my armies bigger, and I am. I'm doing that now. I'm adding extra artillery to everything. Let's see, festivities. I think we'll take the tax because we're already at plus three stability, and the battle was won. So you, I'm going to send one of them to Damascus, and the other one is going to sit in, I think, Rosetta, because it's got a very high force limit. That should prevent people from annoying me all that much. Now, are you all artillery? You are. Excellent, excellent. So I'm going to pause again while I divide the artillery up. You have already split, you can split two. I want to send one here. So that will be you. One to Rosetta. You. One to Adana. And the last one. I think I put somebody in Damascus. I think. I'm pretty sure I just did that. Like, I did that like a second ago and I've already gone. Hang on. Did I? Which leaves me these four. Well, it's currently just one stack, but it will be four after I've finished dividing. I like to have about five artillery in every army at this early juncture because uh, five gives you a nice ability to break down walls. And then you can go out oh, your artillery too. Well, that's a, that's a tricky one. I thought I had an extra army. In that case, you can go join these guys. Easy fix. And then you guys... Split and split. One to Galicia. One to Munich. One to you. And one to you. Easy done. Alright, cool. We've been informed that Poland is fabricating a claim. Those bastards. Well, they can't really do anything to enforce it. Now, ideas. Which idea group are we able to take something in? Bayonet leaders. How far away in technology are we from the next level? 
We couldn't get it even if we wanted it, so I will take bayonet leaders because bayonet leaders is very, very important and it gives us an extra idea. Cool. I didn't realize that I would do that. That was probably what I was aiming for, though. Again, I forget things that I do after five minutes, so half an hour ago? Pfft. We've got the legacy of Rome. Even after the fall of the Western Empire, Rome's legacy continued in Europe, and many of its successor states were desperate to claim some of its former glory for themselves. Now, as the Roman Empire rises from the ashes like the proverbial phoenix, many cannot help but stare in awe. Extra diplomatic words. Extra diplomatic reputation is very, very important. And we also unlocked bayonet leaders, which gives plus one shock. Very important as well. Now then, Poland is still a troubling thing. I I don't know if I want to try and uh, influence them or not. I think I will. I'm going to recall the diplomat from uh, Volga, Bulgaria. I'm going to send one of them to improve rep improve relations with the Swedes, and I think I'll put the last one on attempting to get our dynasty onto the elective monarchy, because that extra reputation will help a lot. Sweden wants to royal marriage us, certainly. And in 20 odd days when Alexander gets back, we will send a diplomat to support our heir. So what this does is, uh, because elective monarchies pick from the nobles of the, the country, you will get somebody out of these currently four options. So Poland has a natural bonus to trying to get its own person on the throne because they don't want to lose the current dynasty, if I remember how elective monarchy works correctly, and other people can influence it to try and force a personal union or something like that. We're just doing it because, well, it would be nice to have a Dahakor on the throne next door because we want to try and make friends. A cardinal's policies upset the nobles. Oh, this is our cardinal minister. Since we made one of our cardinals a minister in our government, he has gone far beyond providing theological insights. Oh dear. And he has innovated significantly in the administration of the Roman Empire. Unfortunately, his suggestions of centralizing power are not possible without removing some authority from the nobles, and they're not happy about it. Alrighty. If we say that he knows what he's doing, we gain a little bit of national unrest, but an extra tax modifier and 17 noble regiments rise up, so noble rebels. Or we could say that Hamburg shouldn't be seat of a cardinal anymore, but having a cardinal minister is useful for us because we've got a lot of people that we need to convert over to the one true faith. So we're gonna keep him. And Vermandois is under siege. Good thing we have an army. So you guys will march to Champagne, and you guys will march to Artois. I, d I don't know. <laughs> I make a hash of most of these French names. You'll forgive me. Or you won't, in which case you won't continue watching. So we should... Oh, Trajan Septimus, you bastard. Now because we have artillery, we should get a bonus to fighting these guys, because they don't have any artillery of their own, so having something that they don't should help, if I remember how combat works in EU4 properly. Do I need to move you to another province? How far over the force limit are you? Oh, you're exactly at it. Alright. That's that's annoying. Does Cairo have a higher force limit? No. Does anywhere here have a higher force limit? Apparently we're not allowed to have nice things. That is unfortunate. Well, you're just going to have to accept some attrition. Shouldn't be too bad. And are there any other armies that need to have their people merged while we're at it? You and you. Excellent. And this is how rebels die in the Roman Empire. We suffer not their rebellious ways. I will send you back home. I'll send you back home as well. Sit over there. I know it's not exactly where they came from before, but I want them to sit there. Unless Ulm is better. Ulm is better, has a higher supply limit, so we'll send them there instead. Alright. So far, so good. So I'm trying to hold back on the advancement of technology, as I mentioned in the previous videos, because I don't want us to get too far ahead. Because if we get too far ahead, it won't be fun anymore because everybody at the end of the game will be westernized. That may happen anyway, 
simply by virtue of the game going for 400 years and we started in such an advanced position. But we're not going to try and actively make sure the people around us westernize. We're not going to go for technology as fast as we possibly can. Because I'd like it if at the end we still had some Muslim tech groups, some, uh, some... What are they called? Well, you're a Muslim tech group as well. There's a specific... Nomad, that's it. Nomads are the ones who aren't particularly, uh, particularly advanced. I think Jamia might be one. No, they're Chinese. Chinese are slightly better than nomads, if I remember correctly. We have lost a claim on a province. We can no longer claim that Boris Glebski is... Oh, right. Volga Bulgaria. Well, they can keep it. We will take to the administration for this one. And apparently we can have a new idea. Flexible negotiation. How far away are we from getting this? We're doing pretty well, actually, in terms of on par for technology. Province war score cost is very, very important, so I'm going to put that in. And do we want to have merc merchantilism or not? This isn't as big of a deal as it was in EU three. You don't get a uh, you don't get a penalty for having higher merchantilism. Absent merchant versus slight loosening of the policy. We've reduced national spy defense. You know what? I'm going to take most... I hate this word. Mercantilism. Merchantilism. I, I don't know. I just hate the word. We've successfully converted some heretics. I like it. Heretics are bad, as we all know. Let's continue making sure that they're all good. Who accepted a military alliance? Ooh. This might be one of their splinter countries. They don't seem to be doing so well, which is unfortunate. And we've converted a third place full of heretics. And I believe we're about to convert that fourth one. How long until you're done? You're at 95%. So it'll be a little while. We lost a Casus Belli against the Timurids. Not a big deal. We'll be uh, probably clashing with them later. They like to get uppity. In the test games that I ran, I played in observe mode. I think I've mentioned this before. I played in observe mode, and uh, the Timurids would often get a little bit uppity against Volga Bulgaria and our own empire, though occasionally they'd get thwacked by, uh, by Rome, and they'd lose about half their land. Oh no, Randolph de Harcourt. Queen Yvonne. And we don't have any... Because of course we don't. I'm going to recall them the guy from Norway. Norway's nice and all, but I want a free diplomat so that we can, uh, we can grab royal marriages and such. If I remember correctly, aristocracy gives us an extra diplomat. We might want to take that next. That could be an idea. I guess we'll see. So Volga Bulgaria, they're actually doing quite well. In the test games that I ran, they often got into fights with uh, the Scandinavian nations very, very early because Gotland is quite powerful and they want to have a Baltic port. So uh, they'd often fight Gotland and then Gotland would get alliances with somebody, one of the uh, one of the other Scandinavian nations, and they'd proceed to invade and you'd have, uh, you'd have Gotland down here. It was redonkulous. Border tensions? Excellent. Border tensions are always good. Even though we probably won't act on a lot of them. Now then. No, nope, no, nope, we will maintain our diplomat. Do we have a royal marriage with Norway? I know we did at one point, not currently. So we'll grab one. Royal marriages are always good. And Marcus de Harcourt looks like he might be a pretty decent emperor. Depends on how long uh, Tiberius lives, if Marcus lives, because your, your heir can die. So that is, a, uh, that is something you have to worry about, because if your heir dies and you have lots of royal marriages, you could end up uh, basically in a personal union with somebody who's much less powerful than you, but because they are alive and you are not. Bad things have happened. Um, we will continue to trust them to remain loyal to us. I believe also that that will go away as we remove uh, more and more foreign religions from our empire. So by the time that you have a complete a completely uh, religiously unified empire, you won't have to worry about disloyal unbelievers or loyal unbelievers because there won't be any unbelievers. 
I think I'm going to raise another army. Do we want national conscription? Kind of. Because it goes towards this. And recruitment time is very, very important. I think there's one in here for ships as well. Maybe not. I'm probably thinking of a different one. Actually, yeah, I, I know I am. I'm thinking of... Um, where is it? Quality, I think. Perhaps not. I don't know. It's, it's one of those other idea groups. Army is the way to glory. Our focus on the land has left many feeling that we have an excellent army. Indeed we do. Extra prestige is good prestige. And we will take bayonet. Uh, not bayonet. Leaders, national conscripts. Reduction in recruitment time is always, always, always vital. Because there will be times, not so much for this game, but if I ever come back and play another game of EU4, which I probably will, because I like EU4. Um, if you're a smaller country, it is vital that you be able to raise forces fairly quickly. Because that can sometimes make the difference between being able to hold a, hold a point and stop the enemy from grabbing all of your land and losing it. So, kind of serious business. I won't name this army just yet. Though I will name it eventually. First, I want to have a look and see if there is anything that we want to build in the way of buildings. Because we do want to continue to expand our, uh, our administration. So, let's see. I think we need a courthouse. In... Is it a courthouse that we're building? No, a temple. We haven't got courthouses yet. We need temples all the way through Italy. The forts are our strength or we must always attack. Extra discipline versus... Morale and fort defense. I'm going to go with the forts. That may have repercussions later, because as you, if you put an over reliance on attack or an over reliance on defense, the events later in that chain will say, oh, because we've relied on defending a whole heap, our army isn't as prestigious anymore, or oh, because we've relied on attacking way too much, we lose manpower because people are cowards, that sort of thing. I think that's the one for being always on the attack. But there's some interesting events in this game. I love this game's scope and um, ability to make it feel like you're really running a country. Although, as I've said, my main criticism about the game is that there's not a whole ton to do during peacetime. And I did not want to click on the trade node. Thank you anyway, game. Now it's just doing it to shit me. I'm going to zoom in so I don't do that again. Ragusa. Have a temple. We will take... Well, because we're building things using administrative power. Administrative power sounds like the option for me. So now we are spreading our religion and all that other wonderful stuff across the empire. Which is as it should be. So I'm imagining because being one of a few Catholic countries, if you are the only Catholic country, I suppose it would be possible for you to block the reform entirely. But you'd have to have no other Catholics in the entirety of the game. So that would be very, very tricky. Uh, the Reformation shouldn't be too bad for us. We're a, we're a very big empire, but we have four missionaries, so we should be able to hold off stuff like that if we're lucky. Um, what do you want me to have? Diplomatic Corps. I will be taking you right away. Thank you very much. The Diplomatic Corps is very, very important because it reduces diplomatic technology cost, as you can see right there. Um, let's start with that one then. Through the establishment of a professional Diplomatic Corps, we can ensure that the hard-learned lessons of senior diplomats are passed on to the younger generation. Very important, because Diplomatic... This is my main criticism of the game, apart from not having a whole heap of stuff to do during peacetime. That monarch points are split between technology, ideas, and building buildings. I get that it's streamlined, but I do not like it. I do not like it at all. Also, we have SPQR, for the Senate and the People of Rome, which is what SPQR stands for, I believe. I believe it is Senatus Populus something Romanus. Actually, I don't think the Q has a separate word, I think it's just Populus. Um, for the Senate and the people of Rome, the Imperial Senate may not wield as much political power as in the days of the ancient Republic, but they still provide the citizens of the Empire 
with a sense of representation that was simply unheard of in most feudal societies. That's you guys! You get to tell me what to do at the end of each session. So I'm trying to, I'm actually trying to think now what I want to ask you guys, and I'm thinking that it might have to do with idea groups, because idea groups are very, very important, and we'll soon be unlocking another one, because we're currently at 7 administrative tech, but 10, although it's 3 levels away, isn't that far in terms of time. You will usually have uh, admin level 10 about 1500 if you're going for technology. It depends on, uh, on a lot of things, like e events for one. And uh, mainly whether or not you get a lot of the... Mainly these. Because we have almost all of the universities in Western Europe under our control, we're going to get a lot. Um, I think this time we will take the prestige, just to change it up a little bit. Now, we want to build marketplaces in spots that have a lot of trade power. Trade power is not really going to be that big of a deal for us, because as a nation that is so humongous, there's no way we're not going to be making money. But I'm thinking it wouldn't be the worst idea to try and shore up our trade in various places. I will probably switch our merchants around eventually. Some people have probably been going, why have you not been doing that? Why? You've ruined everything. Because I'm lazy. <laughs> because I'm lazy is the simple answer. And I'm going to start building docks along the channel ports, because I want the channel ports to basically be the place where we build all of our ships. If we can. And we have a new place that needs converting. So I'm really hoping lose one stability or lose some prestige. Ooh. Uncooperative philosopher. Many times men of ideas would posit ideas that ran counter to accept doctrine, either from the monarch or the church. This was a big deal. This was like, yeah, Galileo right there. Very big deal. He said something that people didn't like, especially the Pope, and he was ostracized for it. It's a thing, it happens. You are dying. Go stand in Celestria instead. What about you guys? Oh, right. You can go sit in Paris. And I think... I can't remember what number we're up to for legions. I think it's 24. Yeah, 23. Alright, oh, I forgot to put you two together. And you guys. 23? No, 25. We're up to 25 at least. I wish you could order this in uh, in name. Ooh. Ooh, that's interesting. Gotland declared war upon their new enemy, Norway. They cite conquest as the Casus Belli. That's intriguing. They're at war with Sweden as well. We might have to declare them our rival simply to stop them from ruining everything up there. I'm going to set you to privateering, and I'm going to put you into the Baltic Sea. I'm thinking that would actually be a good idea, though, to declare them our rival. We're going to do it. We're going to declare them a rival. Whether or not we fight them... No, 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 Denmark. Scotland. Whether or not we fight them will be interesting, because I'm not sure if we will. Uh-oh. Your heir Marcus breathes heavily. He has been lying in bed for three days now, and reflected in the beads of sweat on his forehead is the fear in your eyes for his life. He might not make it through the night unless you do something. This is bad news. Because how old is Tiberius? He's 40-something? He's 39. Ooh. Okay. So there's a 50-50 chance of Marcus dying. Or we can pray for his life, and there's a... Yeah, that, that's a bad plan. We're going to spend the money. Is Marcus dead? No, okay, he survived. I think. Unless this hasn't updated. Okay, no, he survived. That was that was close. Because although Tiberius is actually fairly young by uh, by our modern standards, and probably by the standards of the day as well, at least at this point, um he He's getting to that point where he could drop dead at any second simply because the RNG says, hey. You know how you want that guy to live. Hardy har har. Do we want superior firepower? Kind of. Because it would start us on the Roman legions. 
I'm going to hold off for now, because I want to have a quick look and see if there's anything that we want to build in the way of military buildings. I don't think there is all that many, although we want to put armories all over the place. So I might hold off on an idea for a while. Armory. Yeah, you know what? We're actually going to hold off for a bit. We're going to build... I know I said that I was going to focus on places that are over 100 manpower at the beginning, but all of England and Scotland and Great Britain and Wales, you know, those places, the British Isles, they're all off on their own. So I'm going to build up armories in all of them, regardless of how much actual manpower they have. And let's see now. You need one, Pomerani. I actually might just blanket build them as well, all things considered, because I'm, <laughs> I'm a little bit OCD about the patchwork building here. This pattern annoys me, even though I'm the one who said that I would do it that way. Actually, I know what we'll do. We'll focus on places that have a lot of manpower first, and then we'll build, we'll backfill as we get more and more military power. I could probably just leave this on, actually. I don't know why I keep pausing it for this sort of stuff. I could just keep going, because it's not like there's a whole ton happening, and I was just complaining about how much peacetime doesn't have anything to do, so why am I constantly pausing it? Because I'm an idiot, and I just clicked on the wrong button. Hooray. Alright, come here, Armory. Build me good things. Um, I'm going to fortify all of the northern Egypt area, or I would. A missionary falls ill. The missionary we sent to Gilan hasn't had much luck so far. News is just riot. News have. News has just reached us that he has fallen ill. Any further work on the new church has come to a standstill, and without his guidance, the chances of converting the locals is rather slim. Someone, someone to assist him, or don't worry about it. Nope, we are sending someone to assist him. He needs help. Uh, stuff in Africa has gone disastrously wrong, as usual. Oh, snap. Okay, what have we done? What have we done? Actually, no, not what have we done, what have they done? They have declared war on Gotland, and they cite Reconquest as a Cassus Belli, because of course they did. Alright, the nation of Gurgen has also become westernized. Has it become westernized, or is it becoming? It has become. The nation of Denmark, your faithful ally, is requesting that you come to their aid in the Danish reconquest of Bel... Blakange? Blakange? I... I don't know. It's down here somewhere. There it is. Um, this is a war that they have started. Gotland is allied with Polotsk. That's not a big deal. We would join as a regular ally, and therefore it would be twice as expensive for the enemy to take our provinces, but we would not be able to call our own allies. Well, we allied with Denmark for a reason. That reason was because they are family, and so we will stand and support them. I will send this legion, which I didn't end up renaming because I'm an idiot. I'm going to call it Legio, I believe it's 26. Orléans. 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 I, I don't, I'm pretty sure that's how the French write Orléans. As in the place ish. Does that mean Poland's in on this too? Yes, Poland is in on the war. Okay. That could be helpful. That's serious business. We need a army leader. Julian Peter, who we apparently never set to command an army. And the Baltic fleet needs to come out of port. We need to help out the Danes over here. And then we need to start blockading all of these ports. So are we in the war with Norway? No, we're not. But we could also help Norway because we'll be fighting against their enemy. Alright, we need another army. Because I like having at least two full legions to fight. Uh, we'll build them here. Well, we'll build one more, because we've already got one on the way. And as soon as we have enough military power, we'll assign it a general. So we've won this battle of the Southern Baltic Sea. And another battle, Hegeland Blight, which I believe is over here somewhere. I think. Yes, here it is. Is it Bite or Blight? Bite. Blight. herp a -derp. Okay, uh, you need to keep their army, not their army, their navy, locked up in port, so stay right out there, and we will deal with things soon. Alright, Gotland is probably going to win the early battles, 
over on our border, mainly because they're already there. Although that's Polotsk. We might be able to force Polotsk out of the war. I'm going to send this army, Ferrata, to Bruslaw. And I'm going to send Libertrix to Polotsk itself. And we're going to try and besiege them and force them out of the war. I think we'll be able to make a peace with them. Where is this army? Oh right, it's the army that I just ordered built, of course. I'm an idiot. I'm not a clever man. I'm not sure if you realize this, people who watch my videos, but I'm not necessarily the cleverest fellow in the world. We can also get another general. Hopefully he's better than Julian Pisa. Eh, he's okay. Alright, well. He's the only other general we have, so he gets command. I guess I could put uh, Marcus into the field, but I don't think he had particularly good military stats, did he? 